was one of my very first uh, speeches that I've ever given with my first business and it was actually in Honolulu, Hawaii. I was supposed to meet this other guy who was well in his 30s, fairly successful, and was somebody that I was looking up to, and that person was supposed to speak after me. And what was interesting was the way he opened his speech. And it was very interesting because he gave me a lot of props, which I really appreciated, and he said, you know, hey, you know, props to this new guy, Max, and we've been hearing a lot of good things about him, da da da, but I'm gonna tell you one thing, Max, how old are you? And I think I said at 22 or something like that. And he said, you know, it's great that you're doing these things at 22 because when you're doing well in your 20s, or especially in your early 20s, everybody's surprised and everybody says, oh, good for this guy, he's already crushing it, da da da. But if you had delivered the exact same speech in your 30s, nobody would give a damn. Everybody would expect you to be at the highest level. Everybody would expect you to be there. When you're 30, Nothing in this world is given to you because everything is expected of you. You're 30 now. You're not in your 20s anymore. You don't have the excuse of being young anymore. You don't have the excuse of, oh, he or she is finding themselves. You're supposed to have it all figured out yet. And then there's two things that happen. Number one, we feel the pressure if we haven't figured it out yet. And number two, if we have kind of figured it out, we kind of feel like we're not supposed to change anymore. What I see so many times is people just give up and I see this a lot with old friends of mine, with people in my hometown, you know, um, they have uh, finished high school or they finished middle school and then they started manual labor job that they start with 15, 16 and you know, and they legit have been doing this for 15, 16, 17 years now. And I see that with them is the routine of having done the same for so many years has kind of nuzzled them into this lullaby state where they're just like dragging themselves up to work and they're walking the same street to the same place of work for the last 15 years. And it's that very routine that really starts grabbing its effect when you're 30. And then it's hard to get out of that routine. Especially then, when you could go out there and conquer the world and people would take you seriously, it's that much harder because you're lacking the energy, because you're lacking the novelty, and you've just been lulled in through the countless nights of TV and relaxing there and, and you know, just not giving a damn anymore. So don't give up before you're even getting started. And also, the other thing that I see a lot with people in the 30s is they get bitter. This is something I've noticed with myself so many times because there's only a finite amount of betrayal and lies that are gonna be thrown at you when you're 20. But with 30, you have a bunch of extra years where people can mess with you. And that really makes it easy for you to turn bitter on the whole world. Simply because with extra time, inevitably, you're gonna have more people messing with you, you're gonna encounter more lies, more parts where people disappoint you, people that you might have trusted, more parts where you disappoint yourself where you know you should have taken the high road, but you didn't because of ego, because of stress, because of being overworked, because of being burnt out. So don't turn bitter. Don't turn complacent. Don't give up. And I think what happens when you're in your 20s is life gives you this dough and you're forming your life from that dough that life gives you. And that's what you're predominantly going to be used to doing in your 20s. And then what happens with dough, if you don't touch it, it dries up. And when it dries, you can't really shape it anymore. Don't build a life in your 20s and then leave it at that in your 30s. Like, I got this far in my 30s, that's it. I've got to stay here now. now no, keep fighting, keep progressing, keep working. And people ask me so many times, what goals do you have now, Max? And for a one or two year period, I couldn't properly answer it. I was kind of dancing around and I was like, yeah, maybe do what I keep doing, derp, derp. but I didn't really know it. I didn't have that strong sense of purpose that I have right now again. So I understand you if you're watching this and you feel like you don't have a purpose in your thirties anymore or not yet. Maybe you just missed that train of purpose. You just kind of missed it and you've never gotten onto it. I have been on that train. I have fulfilled my purpose. And then I was in this one or two year no man's land period where I was just like, I don't know. And again, like I felt that pull to just settle down. But thank God back then I had a little bit of a push by several people in my life that said, why don't you do this? You could make much more money. And then I did it in the beginning and I was like, yeah, I like the money. And now slowly but steadily, this new purpose has built up and it's beautiful. It feels just like back in the days when I'm in my twenties, you know, I'm, I'm much more well-established now. I've experienced much more good things. I've experienced a 
hell of a load of bad things. I have wiser energy. I can push as hard as I pushed in my 20s, even though I think it's harder for me. But ultimately, I, I can still do it. Why? Because I'm making a mental commitment to myself to not settle down yet. It's almost like you're driving a race car really fast, and when you're driving on a straight in your 20s, you're like, yo, I'm going straight. I can go as fast as I want, no problem. But when you're in your 30s, you're in a tight corner and you, you still want to push the car as much as you can and you still have the, the foot on the pedal, on the gas pedal. But the faster you go, the closer you're getting to that wall. So you have to be really careful. You have to be doing it more carefully, but you can still push as hard. That wall that you have as you're turning in that corner, that wall that is flying by you with 100 miles, 200 miles per hour, that's the wall of that hairless, lazy, fat 30 year old that is smoking cigarettes and drinking beer just to cope with life, that has turned bitter, that has turned boring and bored, that has given up on life. That's the wall I see flying by at 200 miles an hour. And if I don't pay attention, if I don't grab that steering wheel, if I don't stay committed, that steering wheel does a slight tip to the right and I hit that wall with 200 miles per hour. And the repercussions of that are much, much more severe than when you're in your 20s. In your 30s, people expect a lot from you. And it's fine. You gotta rise with that challenge and you have to realize in your 30s too that it's not only about you, it's about giving back. Because another thing that you notice when you're in your 30s, maybe you've noticed it yourself already, but your parents are getting really old. Older by the day. And you probably see your parents a little less frequently and every time you do see them, you're happy on one side, but you're shocked on the other side. Because you do notice their gray hair, you do notice their bad posture, you do notice the wrinkles, and you do become aware of the fact that someday they're gonna die. And then you'll be alone. And then you have to be the parent that is always there for their kids. It's that strange sense of vanity, of everything getting older, and of things not always being the same and safe as you're used to them. And that's also okay. Because in your 30s, it's time for you to keep crushing, to keep forming that dough that life gives you, to not turn bitter, to not give up, to not get tired. In your 30s, you gotta crush it. You gotta continue to crush it. If you haven't crushed it yet, it's about time. Oh my God, it's snowing. Ah. Oh, my God.